Hey everyone! In this tutorial we'll go over the basics of animating using Pivot Animator 5. This video assumes no knowledge of Pivot Animator or any animation techniques. So first of all, the UI. The main area here is the viewport. Anything inside this white rectangle will be used and rendered in the final export. Anything outside of it will not be, but you can use it to store assets that you will continue to use but not in every frame instead of having to constantly re-add them to the scene. At the very top you have your timeline, these are where all your frames will go. To the left of that is the frame editing box. You have your playback box underneath and then the stick figure operations area as I call it. Uh, this is where you can change parameters of the stick figure that are not to do with its position on the screen. But before we start animating, there are some preferences that I will recommend you do. So go to Edit and Options. Here you'll see the animation settings. This is the dimensions of the viewport that you're using. I do recommend changing this to 1920 by 1080. That changes it to HD. Uh, you don't really need to go higher than HD, otherwise that's a bit of overkill, it's a very simplistic piece of software. But obviously this can change depending on the desired format that you want to export for. Um, playback speed, or frames per second, this I would recommend you put to 24. That is an industry standard frame rate, um, but I'll get to that in a minute. If you click to the Preferences tab, uh, the main thing I would recommend here is to change your onion skins up to something like 3. That's what I would use. Um, if you don't know what onion skins are, basically it's the faint outline that you get of your previous frame. Now, Pivot automatically does have an onion skin, but if you add it up to 3 then you have more frames of reference. If you click on Show Ahead, which I would recommend you do as well, you'll see frames ahead of the frame you're currently editing if you've gone back to an old frame. So click OK. Now the viewport will expand. You can just use a scroll wheel to zoom out. So just real quick before we start animating our walk cycle, I'll explain why we're at 24 frames per second here. If you use 24 frames per second, you can use a lot more frames to convey fast paced motion to the viewer. If you use a lower frame rate, a lot of those faster movements can be lost completely and make it really difficult for the viewer to see what's going on. Now you can always work at a lower frame rate whilst at 24 frames per second, but you can't do it the other way around. And you can't edit this halfway through the animation because it will change the timing of the entire thing. To work at a lower frame rate, you would need to use a format known as twos or threes or fours, however many. And that basically means that you're duplicating one frame two, three or four times to effectively cut your animation frames in half. So every two frames you'll have a new frame. So let's get this guy animated, shall we? So I'm just going to make this guy bigger. And then what we're going to do is go into Edit Figure Type, which will bring up this box. Now don't worry, I'm not going to cover this in this video. Uh, but what we need to do is click this delete segment until we're left with one limb left Which should be that one and then just file add to animation name it line and Here we go. We've got a we've got a line here But this is too small to be a ground plane. So Pick up the pivot point hold down alt on the keyboard and drag and you can scale it up if you hold down control you can then extend it and now we can put this at the bottom of the screen. And there we go. This guy can now stand on something. So we'll start with a contact pose, which is a keyframe in walk cycles where both feet are touching the ground. One of them's stepping and the other one's about to lift off the ground. We're going to move his torso forward a little bit because if you think about how walks really work, 
you're falling forwards and catching yourself with each step. So let him have a little bit of intent and push his torso forward. And then we're going to give these arms a little bit of a natural position like that. So here we go, we're going to work on twos. So we go one, two, if you hit spacebar, or you can click add frame. And now we have two frames. Next, we're going to move the legs so that they get closer together. This leg's going to rise off the ground, but not by much. Because remember, this is walk, so you're not going to be lifting your legs up that high off the ground. The arms will swing back, give it a little bit of follow through as the, as the arms swing, and then save another two frames. Save another two frames, and then we can do a passing position, which is self-explanatory, it's when the arms and legs pass each other. Another two frames. Let's move this arm back, this arm forward. Make sure it's the correct limb that you're moving. So another two frames. Now, because we're doing a walk cycle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this frame, paste it at the end, and now I can see this frame. So I know how far my limbs should move. Remember, it's an in-between between these positions. Save that. Now what I've done there, by accident, it's quite easy to do, is I've replaced one of the duplicate frames, which is pretty easy. All I do is copy that frame and paste insert. That will just copy that frame over. I will want to do the same with this one as well, so that it puts it at the end of this. Now I can delete this frame because that was just being used as a reference. And now the character walks. It's as easy as that. However, a lot of you might be thinking, well, this still doesn't look right. Well, I can tell you why that is. He doesn't have a bounce to his walk. So what we're going to do is keep the first two frames the same as the starting position, move to the next frame, because we're working on twos, and we're going to move this character slightly down. Move to the next two frames. You hold control to select two frames at once, and then we can move the character up. Again, Move the character up a bit more. Here we're going to have him come down again. And here we want to in between it. If we play this animation again, it just looks a lot more alive. And that's it. That's how you start animating in Pivot. So as a little bit of a challenge, what I want you guys to do is take this animation and try and give it more emotion. Because at the moment, he's just doing a casual walk. This is a very boring form of animation. It looks good, but it's not doing anything. He's got no emotion, he's just walking to the right. So try and make a walk cycle where they look evidently happy, or angry, or 
sad, doesn't matter. If you can convey emotion through body language alone, that is what is going to make your pivot animations just that much better. So that's it. Thank you all for watching. And if you have any suggestions over what tutorials you'd like me to cover in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.